Oh, welcome back. The Olympics are over. Well done to all of the Olympians, whether they medal or not. Great performance representing your country. Fantastic. We have a massive show coming up tonight. Ros Lanning and Country Footy's First Lady will come back a little bit later in the program and give us a comprehensive finals wrap. Plenty of finals played and to be played across the state this coming weekend. We also have a great feature story about a club legend with the Birrigara Football Club, the GRV Club Challenge. And boy, oh boy, was there an unbelievable race a week ago with uh, one club getting a stack load of cash. We've got all the Hill, uh, William Hill odds for the weekend's footy coming up, as well as the Country Racing Victoria Wheel. Well, it's always a pleasure to have this man, the 1997 Best and Ferris winner with the Cats, alongside of me tonight, and that is Liam Pickering. Welcome, Liam Pickering, I should say. That's Welcome back, Picks. Don't wear it out. Welcome good, back, it's, hey, it's good to be back, Swallow. Yep. Great to be here. Uh, nice little refreshing break over yeah. the Olympics. I, I did, you watch it. It. did you watch a lot? Oh, I did watch a lot, because mm. I'm not a very good sleeper, so in mm, right. the middle of the night, I was watching everything. Mm, mm. But, well, uh, yeah, no, it's good to be back. Um, Oh, well, obviously the, the the athletics. I mean, I love Mo Farah's performance. Yep. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. To be able to fall over in a 10k run and get up and win. Yeah, and well, then a bloke the, called Bolt was okay. And Usain mm. was Usain was brilliant. <laughs> has he so, got some swagger? Oh, has he ever? He's got, he reminds me of you when you were playing. You and Duck. Oh, really? Like, I wish I was of... a tenth of the coolness that Usain Bolt is <laughs> and about a fifth of the money that he's got. Unbelievable. <laughs> Great to be back, though. And uh, I tell you what, it's been a tough year for the Tigers. Uh, it's been really hard work, but we appreciate uh, one of the fine products that have come out of Daniliquin joining us on the show tonight, and that is Sam Lloyd. Welcome, Sam. Thanks no, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Has been a tough year for the Tigers this year. Coming off 15 wins last year, a finals game didn't win that. A lot of uh, excitement around the Tigers at the beginning of the year, but it just hasn't played out that way. Yeah, no doubt it's been a tough year for us and, you know, we're, the, we're the, probably the first to admit that. And um, a couple of things haven't gone our way with a few injuries, but we just haven't played and developed like other teams have this year. So it's probably something we'll look to fix up next year and really bounce back. Well, let's, uh, let's not worry about the Tigers just for a minute because the season's nearly done, old mate. And it's, it can't come quick enough when, you're not, when you can't make finals. I know how tough it is. Um, Daniliquin, tell us about your, your journey to make it to AFL footy because you weren't an early draft pick, you weren't a 17, 18 year old that was picked, you had to do it the hard way. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, as you said, I'm from Daniliquin originally, I went back there after school and played three or four years there and, um, and then came back down this way into Mount Eliza and played uh, a few games for them, a year for them and then for Bendigo Bombers and Frankston in the VFL. Yeah, I'm looking at that picture, Sammy. <laughs> the picture that we just had up. You looked up a fraction portly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was beers and pies after the game there, mate. It's not ice baths and Gatorade now, yeah. mate. Oh, it's not fires, <laughs> I mean, that, that's not the most flattering photo of a young boy. Yeah, the puppy fat's still there. <laughs> hey, but how did you... In, you never gave up hope, though, did you, of playing league footy? I mean, you went... You kicked 110, I think 2010, you kicked mm. 110 goals for Denny. Yeah. Uh, ended up made your way to the VFL from there. Yeah, no, um, as you said, kicked 100 goals for Denny in 2010 then and was lucky enough to win a flag for them in 2011. And then I was living down in Melbourne, so I was travelling back and after winning the flag, I thought we'd accomplished a bit there and um, was sick of the drive. So, um, and then thought I'd have a crack at the VFL down Frankston Way and started playing a few good games and um, uh, really decided I was a chance to get picked up and work pretty hard at that and was lucky enough to get picked up by the Tigers. Well, 41 AFL games already, Swatter, yep. he's doing well. As, well, there you missed a game this year. You no, every, every game, game this year, yeah. Which is great. I mean, the development's really there. You've kicked mid-30s goals, I think, yeah, this year 34, as well. 35, 35 yeah. goals, which is a great effort, mm -hmm. playing as a sort of half-forward flanker forward. Um, tell us about that feeling. Everyone, as a kid, dreams of kicking the winning goal after the siren. Well, it happened to you early in the year against what is now the premiership favourites in the Sydney Swans. That must have been an unbelievable feeling. We're having a look at the vision here, oh, Swatter. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> you were probably calling. You yeah. were probably calling. Oh, yeah. You know what? How confident were you? Because as many you got, I thought, they're cooked here. You'll kick this. Because yeah. one thing about you is you, you are a very reliable <laughs> kid. Yeah. And yeah, no, I don't know if I was overly confident I was going to kick it, but for some strange reason, I just thought, oh, I've got to hurry it up. Otherwise, I'll think about it too much mm. and I've just got to keep my head over the ball and kick the cover off it because my legs are absolutely cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I did that and fortunate enough I went through because it was probably a highlight of a pretty down year for us. Well, there's no doubt that, that that's what it exactly mm. is, you know, because yeah. it's been a tough year, as we mentioned earlier, but that feeling, I mean, as a kid, did you dream about kicking the, side, the goal after the siren? Yeah, everyone sort of dreams of that, as you know. I practised a few times in the backyard at, at Denny and... Um, yeah, it was a pretty amazing feeling and I'd be lying if I hadn't watched the footage every now and then <laughs> if you're feeling a bit down or just starting to get me up. But it's one thing they can't take away from me. I've done 
done that, so it was good. Yeah, yeah it, was a, uh, it was a great effort, and it was a significant loss for the Sydney Swans who are doing nice things. Uh, let's hope that next year for the Tigers and you personally are uh, filled with highlights like that. Hey, uh, am I right in saying that you're an ambassador for the Denny Ute Muster? Uh, yeah, I'm helping out this year. What um, does that actually involve? Oh, just trying to get as many people there as I can, mate, as I'll be going this year. and. Just want to make it as uh, big a spectacle as it can be because it's good for the town and it's good fun. It's fantastic. It's an iconic event. Pickers, have you ever been there? I've never been. You should go. What I, what yeah, I will suit say. You. You'd be <laughs> yeah. right what amongst suit me? the blue, the trucky shorts, the blue singlet, <laughs> the flip-flops, I tell you. and maybe a packet of darts shoved down the back of the back pocket. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Hey? <laughs> rum drink. Uh, yeah. rum for you. Yeah. Is that what it is? The drink, the drink yeah. of choice is rum yeah, up there. Okay. To the gills is rum. I'll tell you what it is. And I'll, I'll, look, I'm throwing someone under the bus. <laughs> and I don't like doing <laughs> it. I've got nothing to do with this. I want that on the record. But Ros Lanigan, who is our gun report, who yep. will be up shortly on yep. this program. Yep. Seven years ago, met her dude. Oh dear. Met her plus one mm. at the Denny Ute Muster. Go. So yep. uh, she's done her best work in the, in yep. the, uh, at the Denny Ute Muster. So yep. hey, good luck with that. That'll be, uh, that'll be a good fun weekend, though. Yeah, it'll be good. I'm hoping to try to get a few of the Tigers boys up there. It's um, on grand final weekend, so they have the big screen playing that we probably won't be watching because we'll be a bit jealous. <laughs> 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 no, it's fantastic. And uh, the iconic Denny Ute Muster is on again September 30 and October 1, featuring Keith Urban. He is a superstar. Visit dennyutemuster.com.au to get your tickets. Uh, we appreciate you coming in. We know it's been a tough year, but uh, you've shown great signs of improvement. Personally, we wish you well and the club in 2017. And as a small token of our appreciation, Sam, you go home with $100 worth of St Goliath clothing, combining street trends with easy-to-wear style. St Goliath is available in my and Edge clothing stores nationally. So thanks very much for coming in. in uh, good luck for the remaining game and good luck for next year. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys. There we good go. Idea. Sammy Lloyd, he's a terrific young player. We've got to take a break, and the uh, lady that uh, Pickers well, threw under the bus is coming up very shortly. Before we head to the break, though, Pickers, we've that. got the Hot Hondo Holmes yeah, Goal Hondo of Holmes. the Week <clears throat> nomination. Who is it? Where is it? And what? How good is it? I'll tell you what it is, Swatter. It's Huey Douglas. Yep. Now, oh, Huey, Huey boy Huey. here. Just watch this. Yay! He's taking that. There you go. It doesn't look like it's anything special. Yeah, like, what's happening and, here? Well, don't worry about it. Siren's gone. Elimination final. Sammy Lloyd at your Goodness heart me. Out. Get us through to the next week. Unbelievable. It, it looked as though it was track and left. Yeah, it's he, he has actually hit that left and it has worked <laughs> yeah. its way back beautifully. Yeah, so well done to Hugh. His immediate response was sad sack. I've missed. And then all of a sudden it's curved back. I'm a hero. And he's got get around me type yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Hotondo Homes. Build, you build your dream home today with free upgrade packages available until tomorrow. Visit Hotondo Hotondo. I should say, .com.au. When we come back, Ros Lanning, Country Footy's first lady, with a comprehensive wrap of all the finals played and to be played this weekend. Off the bench, coming up with more after the break. Back to Off the Bench, proudly brought to you by GRV. Get your tap bets on for tomorrow's Greyhound National Finals and support our Big V superstars. OK, got to keep moving. Let's head around the state. As we welcome Country Footy's First Lady, Ros Lanigan. Welcome, Ros. Great to be here in a very, very exciting time of year. We've got our first Grand Final tomorrow, but I'll talk about that later. I thought you were going to talk about the Ute Muster. Mm. <laughs> oh, maybe we'll just let that yeah. one go. We'll let that one slide. It's a seven year itch. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> don't tell him that. All right, all right. <laughs> right, let's jump into it. Ros, lots of finals to be played this weekend. Yes, we're going to do a bit of a wrap from the finals around the weekend. We're going to start off in Pickers Part of the World, the Wimmera Football League, where the Horsham Saints caused an upset at Stall at Stall. That's on that's last Saturday, game. knocking off the minor premiers by 15 points after trailing by eight points at half time. But the Saints had a bit of a purple patch late in the third quarter, and that put them in front at the last change and they added a couple of quick goals early in the last to seal the deal. Jacob Cook Harrison kicked five goals for the Saints and was best on ground and their reigning best and fairest Jacob O'Byrne had a ripping game in the midfield as well. Now for the Burroughs, a couple of Della Hunties in the best yeah, players course, there. Of Not course. surprising. So the big game tomorrow, it's the yeah. preliminary final yeah. and it's your boys Stall taking on Minyat Mertoa at Ararat. Assessment yeah. please. Well, assessment is Stall to have too much run. Uh, the big ground will suit at Alexandra Oval, and we, we, I think the B Demons we played last week, is that right? Yes, and they're bye out. Bye-bye, yeah. Demons. Bye-bye. <laughs> that uh, doesn't happen to too that. often. <laughs> couldn't have said the Stall boys win. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, I think they can beat Minion. Okay, very Gotta good. Got to stop Clinton Young. Is he playing? Yes. 
Got to stop as far him. As I know. Um, the Golden Rivers Football League first semi final was last weekend as well, and Nullawool one point Whoa. winners over Wandali. Don't get any closer than that, boys. A solitary behind was enough to book Nullawool's spot in the Golden Rivers League preliminary final. Um, Nully was five points ahead at three quarter time. The Bombers just wouldn't go away and actually managed to get their noses in front in the last quarter, but Nully took the lead again right at the end and got the one point win. Callan Heslop was the only multiple goal kicker for the winners. He kicked three. Great effort from Wandala though. They finished a couple of games behind Nullawool in the home and away rounds and just scraped into finals on percentage so they took it right up to them that's for sure. Now Nully will play the loser of tomorrow's second semi-final between Murrabit and Ultima in the preliminary final next weekend. They've the top four so they play yep. each final in a different week. And one more piece of Golden Rivers Football League news. Well Cool has announced a senior coach for next year. They've been in recess this season so they've announced their senior coach and they're very keen to get back on the park next year so that'll be a great story Excellent. if they're able to do so. Now we'll move on to the Horsham and District Football League finals as well. The first elimination final we'll have a look at here. Harrow Balmoral versus Laharam. Now this is the goal of the yeah. week that we saw oh, earlier yeah. in our Hotondo segment oh. kicked by Hugh Douglas. He was the absolute hero. He kicked three for the game including two in the last quarter. The first goal and the last goal of the last quarter. So he had a massive um, influence on the game. Harrow was up by 14 points at three quarter time and as I said kicked the first goal of the last quarter and then Laharam got a real run on and came right back into it. Now, Look at not this surprisingly, Look at this it's left. just it got, uh, it looks left. Judged it beautifully. Well done, Huey. And <laughs> just one more to have a look at here. Um, the Ballerine Footy League in the second semi-final. Have a look at this result, boys. Geelong Amateur uh, defeated Queenscliff by 106 points. 57 scoring shots to 16 in that game. What a result in a final. You don't well, see that too often. They often see 15 goal scorers no. in one game either. Absolutely mm. not. Absolutely not. Now, as I mentioned, the first grand final is tomorrow and that will be in the Omeon District Football League at NSA. Always the first country footy grand final to happen. And it'll be Lyndon O'South taking on Swan Reach. Lyndon O'South, of course, the reigning premiers in this league. And Swan Reach is coming off a 59-point win over Bruthen in the preliminary final last weekend. But Lyndon O'South undefeated this year. You couldn't bet against them, no. I wouldn't have thought. No, not for mine. No, nah, not at all. And that will be their second... If they if they win the flag tomorrow, it'll be their second back-to-back -back flag in five years. So they won 2012 and 13, lost 14, and then if they win tomorrow, they'll win 15 and 16 as well. So they've had a good um, purple patch for a few years now, the Swampies. Real um, Hawthorne footy club stuff. <laughs> absolutely. So and great ground, the NSA yeah, footy ground. It Beautiful is. Beautiful football ground and a great day, I'm sure, tomorrow then. Uh, well done, Roz. Always comprehensive. Before we let you go, though, some GRV news, please. Yes, a very big weekend in Greyhound Racing. Now, there'll be three Greyhounds from regional Victoria representing the Big V in Adelaide tomorrow night in the Group 1 Nationals. This is a big event in the GRV calendar. Now, we've got two uh, dogs in the National Sprint Grand Final. Zambora Brocky, who's trained by Anthony as a party at Mernyong, and also Dundee Osprey, uh, trained by Jeff Scott Smith at Pakenham South. And then we've got the, our third dog is in the distance final and that's called Ring the Bell, which is trained at Neerham South in Gippsland by Jared O'Keefe, great part of the world, Absolutely. Neerham South. Yep. Um, so best of luck to all those dogs and their connections for tomorrow night. And the other piece of news is Geelong Greyhound Fernando Bale was crowned Victorian Greyhound of the Year last Friday night at the GRV Awards. Now that's the highest accolade a greyhound can receive in this state. Now Fernando Bale won it an amazing eight Group 1 races and was the first Greyhound to earn $1 million in prize money. Superstar. A great dog. Mm, superstar. Very, very well known yep. throughout the Greyhound Absolutely. community. Uh, very good, Roz. The GRV Club Challenge is back yeah. and uh, a little bit of cash. In fact, there. a lot of cash is going one way. Picks, not sure who won the race, but we this. may have vision as to which dog did win the oh, race. It sounds to me like yours. Uh, you may have. <laughs> I'm going out on a limb. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to get involved, we'd love you too. Social media, you can do that via Twitter or Facebook. They are both the addresses to get involved. When we come back, we have a great feature story about a club legend with the Berrigara Football Club. And this is not a player, but this is an absolute legend, a lady off the ground doing amazing work over a long period of time. Stick around. That and the GRV Club Challenge coming up next. Welcome back to the show. It's brought to you by GRV. Make sure you get your tab bets on for tomorrow's Greyhound National Finals and support our Big V superstar as well. We love our feature stories and this one's a beauty. It is Dot Nichols. She is the matriarch of the Birigara Football Club. And let's have a look at her amazing story over 42 years. I'm Dorothy Nichols and I've 
lived in Birragurra all my life. I've spent a lot of my winters here, um, over 42 years, so I've been told. We were to do this report a few weeks ago and Sally Dot missed a game. Uh, it was the second game in 42 years that she missed. And she's here at um, 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning and we'll leave about 5 o'clock tonight. And she's back here in the morning cleaning the kitchen floor and sweeping up um, any time around 9.30, 9 o'clock. So, yeah, great for her. Not a young lady. I went to school here and went off nursing and came back and married a Birragurra boy who played football here in the 50s. We live, well, our back fence is the football fence, so we have a gate in the, in the fence so that we can sort of just come out through the gate and we're in the football ground instantly. We've got a canteen committee and that's run by three or four of the ladies and uh, then we have a roster that ladies, mums of footballers or netballers or just volunteers come on board, put their name down for the two hour period. And then we also then put the footballers on the canteen roster as well and the netballers to fit in between or after their games. So as I say, it's back to volunteers all through. We do, you know, the pies, sausage rolls, salad rolls, sandwiches, cakes, soup, hot dogs. Um, we have a morning barbecue and a lunch barbecue. And then at, on the evening we do um, roast beef rolls for the both teams and the supporters after the match. We're a pretty good team here. We've, we've had a lot of success, but the one thing that people talk about is our canteen. Now, I haven't had a lot from the canteen just because I want to make sure I'm having the right food, but our canteen has a great reputation around the district. And that goes back to, again, the volunteers. It goes back to the ladies like Dot who just prepare the food during the week and uh, get to game day, we get to enjoy it. And, and a lot of people who actually don't watch football come for our canteen so it shows you a fair bit about what goes on behind the scenes there. At the start of each year we check what our other local teams are charging because um, you know if you outprice yourself people are going to go down the street which isn't far from here you know and purchase food where we sort of want to offer as much as we can. Canteen ladies will hand over 20 plus thousand dollars the football club by the end of the year. Uh, just out of the canteen alone, and that's on nine games this year. I do enjoy making sure that if people need anything or a cup of tea or, you know, that I've got time to socialise, and I love that part of it. We always talk about success in regards to trophies and premierships, but uh, that's actually not what it really is. Um, being a successful club and part of something is you sort of strive towards goals and you, you enjoy it and you do it the right way. You look after your development programs, you look after making sure people are aware of what their roles is, uh, that they're including everyone and from that the byproduct will be the success. So we sort of do it the other way around. We make sure people are enjoying their time here because they just want to be a part of it and they're the heartbeat of a lot of communities around this uh, area. You can go to people and ask them, could you do this, could you jump the canine? And no problem at all. If you've got volunteers on board and they're ready to jump in and do a job, you're on a winner, without a doubt. No doubt whatsoever, footy clubs are built on the back of unbelievable effort by people like uh, Dot. So well done, Dot. You're an absolute legend. Keep up the great work. Hey, Pickers, we've got to keep moving on. A little bit of cash is going to a football club, thanks to really? uh, your and my efforts with regards to a race that we had a small yes. wager on on yes. August the 6th. Now, we're going to have a look at the vision. Where's the money going and how much? It's to the, going to the uh, Bamble Saints Football Netball Club, and it's 2250 Here now. we go. You're right. on the inside. I'm on the I'm out. on the inside. Swan's on the outside. Yep. I've backed mine each way, by the way. Bearville. Lazar. Get in there, get in there. Come on, Bear Bill. Come on, mate. Come, Come on. on, you. You're a good He's thing. Kicked up. Look at me. Yes, yeah, beaten by a half nose. Well, I would have thought my big hooter would have been <laughs> yes. able to get us over the line. Anyway, How much did we I win? I ran second. Yeah. Uh, all up. 2,250 to the Bamboo nice. Saints yep. uh, Football Netball Club. So well done to them. And it's on again this week. Yep. You had a go at me for backing it each way. I did. That's why we got the chocolates. I, I did. No, but well was, done to you yeah, as well. Yeah, no, thank you very much. We can hold the race. I'm on a real good streak at the moment. No, uh, and we're doing it again because uh, race eight, in fact, we're doing it on behalf of this footy club. Oh, That's yeah. our Paul Spargo's team. That's Spargo's old model. Why do they need any more cash? Why do they need more cash? Unbelievable. That but anyway, they're getting a grand. Year. They're no, getting a grand. Where are we racing this weekend? Uh, I've gone with Quick Step. Yeah, uh, it's form. from the pink. So yep. it's a very fast starter. So I think I'm going to be very hard. I'm going straight on the hooter. Yeah, I'm going 500 the win. 250 each way. Willie G. It's uh, one from here before. Fast time. Likes this box. So good luck. And uh, let's hope we win a stack load of cash for the Albury Footy Club. We've got to take a break, Pickers. When we come back, we've got all of the William Hill odds and some final thoughts before the we wheel? wrap it up. And the wheel. The wheel. Let's get in there. That's coming up next too. <laughs> It 
It's our favourite part of the show, the celebrate at the country races wheel with lots of goodies to be won each and every week. And the major prize, a $2,500 marquee package at the Kilmore Cup later this year, and that'll be drawn on our grand final eve show. But we need contestants in order to spin the wheel each and every week, so get your entry in and all the information about celebrating at the country races at countryracing.com.au. Yes, and this week we're playing for Katrina Ginevan from Wangaratta. So good luck to you, Katrina. Come I'll on, Pix. a nice spin. Oh, I had the wobbles. Got the wobbles out. Oh, yeah. Well, $200 online. Yep. Hospitality voucher. Thanks very much, CRV. Yep. Nicely done. Well done, Katrina. Well done, well done, Katrina. Well done Katrina. Pix. Thank you to Darren Galley and the team at Country Racing Victoria. Time now for all the odds brought to you by William Hill Online Racing and Sports Betting. William Hill, faster, easier betting. Let's start with this one, uh, Pix. Geelong yeah. taking on the Ds. Yeah, well, it would have been a much better game, yeah. I guess, if Melbourne had been able to get over Carlton. But the Cats should get it done. More important game for Geelong than it is Melbourne. I'll Sydney it. Tigs. Uh, the Sydney Swans won't lose to the Tigers, who were bloody awful last week, to they be honest. Were, they? Uh, so the Swans will win that game. Kangas uh, and the Giants. Well, well, Melbourne did North Melbourne a favour last week. They did, but I reckon North have got a hope in this game. I no Scotty be... Thompson, though. Do you yeah. want to retract that? No, no, I'll give them a chance, North. But nice. uh, Big game of footy. Big game of footy. And Hawthorne, you think, will get the job done against a very improving Collingwood late in the season yeah, as well. And just quickly, well done to the three retiring pies. Dane Swan, Alan Turvey and Brett McCapper. Absolutely. Here's the uh, Brownlow betting. Danger's unbackable at $1.40, really. You can have a little go if you want. Dusty. Dusty, mate. Luke Parker's coming to $12. Very good. As has the bomb at the $12. Bond. The big bond at $12. Yeah. Not a bad bet. The rest I don't think can win. Headed probably by Sam Mitchell, who always polls well. Hey, we're a week away from... Actually, we're two weeks away after the bye concludes of the finals. Yep. Uh, two weeks out. Who do you think is the real short price favourite, just quickly? Look, my, my view, Swatter, is mm. that the Sydney Swans are the best team in the AFL. So I think they'll be the hardest to beat. And I'd, if I had a st- selection right now, it would be mm. Swans. Yeah, not going to disagree with that. Thanks, Pix. Thanks, Ros. Thanks, Sam Lloyd. Thank you for joining us. Good luck to all the teams playing footy and netball this weekend. Have a great weekend. Back same time next week. See you then.